Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is November 21st, 2019. And this is our episode number 512. Today we continue looking at Copel, Companhia Paranaense de Energia, which is part of our look through Brazilian energy companies, specifically electricity companies. I think we've dedicated the last, what, 20, 30 episodes perhaps to this initiative. And Copel so far has survived our, let's say, simplistic screening criteria. And how did they do it? By not having too much of uh, debt to equity. It's not really within our desired range, which would be from 0 to 0 0.5, but it's not so far, so let's not discard it quite yet. The liabilities to equity around 1, pretty good no problem here current ratio at 1.39 it is a significant improvement over the last few years but not really uh, in, in the minimum that we would really like which would be 1.5 and, and then earnings here so if you compare the debt so 11 billion with their recent earnings ability here uh, it's not so great so let's simplistically again say it's about a billion let's even let's say two billion which is it's clearly not okay uh, but it's still five would be still 5.5 times uh, their earnings to cover their debt so this is not good but we did not want to discard this quite yet because we know that these past four or five years have been particularly rough energy companies you know they are subject to the whims of regulation and that is uh, that is a problem but we simply don't want to discard this company quite yet so what we want to do today is to get the earnings numbers revenue numbers for 10 years same thing for free cash flow so what i did here was i found the dfps beforehand so you will see 2015 2013 and 2011 and as they have two years worth, we'll use those. Let me say something here. I believe that you should do this yourself. So plenty of places have screening uh, tools. You can get tables with all these numbers, but I do believe in you going there and dig digging yourself. Why do I believe that? because even the process of finding this information will force you if you need to be forced which is a symptom uh, of perhaps a lack of vocation for this kind of activity but you will want to look at the company you will want to look at the website you will want to read uh, about what the company does to say the very least so finding these documents yourself uh, should be part of your task. I know other people go quantitatively you know, They have all sorts of other approaches and if it works for them more power to them. It's not what I do So um, For 2015 we can go to the results And the consolidated revenue here was 14 7 to 8 And for 2014, 13,919. Profits, 1,266. And in 2014, 1,336. I'm always rounding to the nearest here make much of a difference we're not looking for close calls at all free cash flow let's see so free cash flow uh, the way I do it is operating cash flow plus investment cash flow so operating cash flow here in 2015 1321 
investment cash flow minus 1952 so minus 631 and here you start to see to get a feel for the company so when a company has highly volatile free cash flows such as so far it looks like Coppel has it's never as good as this solid company like steady earner of course and then you adjust your appraisal of the company for 2014 operating cash flow 1091 and investment cash flow minus 2563 so another year with a negative free cash flow okay there are a lot of things I could say here but maybe later so onwards to 2013 so revenue here was 9180 see the big jump here and in 2014 8493 Profits, 2013, 1507, 2012 actually, now 2012, 999. And free cash flow, let's see. Operating cash flow thirteen thirty eight investment cash flow minus eighteen sixty four and for twenty twelve operating cash flow fourteen nineteen. investment cash flow minus 1828 great so we need two years more and then we'll have three six we'll have 10 years worth of information or almost 10 because 2019 is not over but we could consider this possibly information enough so revenue seven 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 billion seven hundred and seventy six for 2011 and for 2010 six nine oh one profit eleven seventy seven And for 2010, a billion and ten. Free cash flow. Operating cash flow, 1148. And investment cash flow, minus 1629. And finally, for 2010, operating cash flow 1248, and investment cash flow minus 1132, so 116. So what is striking here is how they have had six years straight with well, we, they didn't have negative here, but not good cash flow free cash flow and when you see free cash flows like this the first thing you I uh, ask myself is okay so they're burning cash 
maybe they're investing in the business okay at least is their revenue growing and it might look like it is but not so much because of inflation so you could do the following thing here Oops. So as you can see here, so from 11 billion to about, let's say 16 over 10 years, burning this kind of cash flow here, it's just not so great. Okay, so um, earnings. And now it will inflation adjust these numbers. Same thing for free cash flow. So this is this year. I'm not quite yet inflation adjusting last year. Okay. Yes, this gives us a, a, a little bit of a distortion. But if inflation has been had been rampant this year, I would touch it. But I'm not doing it. Okay. So we have the inflation adjusted numbers. And we want to do make a comparison between the price for sure and the averages here. So one second. So this will be average. Mm, sorry. Let me try again. Average. And I will do an offset, which will just take these numbers, take 10 rows and one column. 10, yeah, 10 rows and one column. And this is our average, just as much as this is our average earnings here. And this is our average price to free cash flow. This is for 10 years. So let's do the same thing for five. Interestingly, the, the average earnings over the last five years and 10 are not that divergent, right? But the free cash flow is completely divergent, like over six times. Strange, right? And now we can do, so this is the market cap. Let me just bring it to here. And now we'll do price to earnings over 10 years and price to free cash flow over 10 years. So, so this is the price divided by these earnings. This is the price divided by the earnings, but now inflation adjusted. Same thing for free ca cash flow. So before adjusting for inflation, price, which is the market cap, divided by the free cash flow. price which is the market cap divided by the free cash flow if i'm going too fast uh, if you haven't done this too much in my initial episodes i do this farce or a lot looks a lot slower so so now i'm copying and pasting for five years i'll come right back here to talk about what can i say about this company so this is i've seen this before in state owned companies and i'm not entirely sure if copel is state owned but uh highly likely the divergence between earnings and free cash flow like huge we saw the, this in petrobras a few years ago and 
it's hard to trust these numbers, you know, because they're so divergent. How how are, are they doing what they're doing? And had this company had, you know, it's divergent, but the multiples are insanely attractive, and the debt's really low. Maybe would we could think differently, but the sum of factor here just does not entice me too much. So debt to equity not extremely safe erratic free cash flow numbers that don't match earnings over the long term over 10 years right uh, and the multiples so a multiple at 10.37 price to earnings it's quite all right you know but the free cash flow here really bothers me you know maybe there's something i don't know maybe this they have like a financial arm or something uh it may be and if you know let me know but in the way we are approaching things here the combination of the debt level uh, and these multiples and the fact that this company is probably state-owned just make me want to look at other companies so pass on the opportunity simple as that and that's what we'll do so for Coppel the analysis ends here uh, and in our next episode we will come back with a different company. So let's look at our list here. So Coppel, we can say that a bit high, free cash flow erratic, multiple to free cash flow, very high. So this leaves us with four companies CETEP Energias do Brasil, Eneva, and Neo Energia. And we'll get to them. So the next one probably CETEP. We'll take a deeper look. Thank you very much. If you've gotten this far in this episode and you're not a subscriber yet, please think about becoming one. And if your decision is to become one, you can do that by clicking or tapping on the subscribe button. Very easy. If you have questions, suggestions, feedback, and especially if you spot mistakes in the analysis please leave a comment in the video i'll be delighted to write you back as soon as i can meanwhile i wish you a wonderful day and see you next time